Hi everyone, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Today I'll be looking at five must-read science fiction novels by Philip K. Dick. Philip K. Dick was an American science fiction author born in 1928 whose popular work spanned across an epoch in the 60s and 70s known as the new wave of science fiction, a period characterised by literary experimentation and a focus on soft rather than hard sci-fi. Dick's work became popular in this time for, well, being pretty weird, but in a good way. If you want to get a bit more familiar with Philip K. Dick, you can check out this video. Obviously, as with all my recommendation videos, this list is completely subjective and not definitive. I'd love to get your own PKD recommendations in the comment section. So let's get into the first must-read PKD book, which is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, or Dados, published in 1968, takes place in a post-apocalyptic San Francisco after a nuclear war in 1992. In this world, androids are colonial slaves and humans care for animals to prevent the mass extinction of several species. The story follows bounty hunter Rick Deckard, whose job is to find and retire the androids, basically kill them, that have escaped from the colonies to live on Earth. The problem is they're indistinguishable among humans. The only way to tell who is an android is by taking the Voigt Kampf test. Deckard is charged with hunting eight fugitive Nexus 6 model androids, the most intelligent advanced androids ever created. Daedos openly questions how technology will change what it means to be human, the potential dangers of technology and the very essence of empathy. Who or what is deserving of empathy and what isn't? In the great style of PKD, love it or hate it, Daedos is complex, mind-bending in places, and leaves us with more questions at the end than when we started. Well, it did for me anyway. The book is also the inspiration for the 80s cyberpunk film Blade Runner, although the book and film are worlds apart. Full disclosure, if you love Blade Runner and are thinking of reading Daedos, be prepared for a totally different experience. The next PKD book is the Man in the High Castle. The Man in the High Castle, published in 1962, is set in an alternative reality where the Allies lose the Second World War and Nazi Germany and Japan rise to power. It follows the rise of an American resistance group in the Nazi-controlled US. America has been divided into Japanese-controlled Pacific States of America and the German-controlled eastern portion of the country, as well as a narrow independent buffer between the two. The resistance has been bolstered by a seeming window into another universe, a book called The Grasshopper Lies Heavy, which portrays a world where the Allies won the Second World War and the Nazis lose. The story follows the multi-stranded plots told from a number of perspectives, each of which interconnects. When I first read this book I didn't even see all the connections, and to be honest I probably still haven't. But that's something I've come to expect from PKD books, and one of the things that I love about his work, and why he's such a seminal new wave sci-fi writer. He couldn't give a crap about the reader's expectations or about conforming to traditional modes of storytelling. He told the stories he wanted to tell in the way he wanted to tell them, and for me The Man in the High Castle exhibits this completely. The next book I have on my list is Ubik. Ubik, published in 1969, is set in a future 1992 where psychic powers are utilised in corporate espionage and technology allows recently deceased people to be maintained in a lengthy state of half-life type hibernation. Ubik follows Joe Chip, a technician at a psychic agency who after an assassination attempt begins to experience strange alterations in reality that can temporarily be reversed by a mysterious substance known as Ubik. In typical Dick's style, the book is complex, puzzling and deals with a lot of big themes, like questioning the existence of an afterlife and the nature of reality. Ubik is a total mindfrack, and I often find myself thinking back to parts of the story still trying to fathom out what was going on. I think if Dick had one thing in mind when writing Ubik, it was that he wanted to make the reader question reality itself, and asks, how do you know that life you're living is real? 
As one of Dick's most acclaimed novels, Ubik was chosen by Time magazine as one of the 100 greatest novels since 1923. A Time critic described it as a deeply unsettling existential horror story, a nightmare you'll never be sure you've woken up from. Ubik is one book that certainly contributed to Dick's reputation of being a master of weird, mind-bending fiction. The next must-read Dick novel I have is A Scanner Darkly. A Scanner Darkly, published in 1977, is set in a future America that has lost the war on drugs. Substance D is not known as death for nothing. It is the most toxic drug ever to have made its way onto the streets of LA. It destroys the link between the brain's two hemispheres, causing disorientation, then complete irreversible brain damage. The story follows Bob Arcter, a narcotics agent living undercover as a member of a household full of drug users. His is a life of secrecy. He does not reveal his true identity to his housemates, nor does he reveal who he is to the police. They know him only as Fred. But Bob is also addicted to substance D, and when he's pulled in by his superiors for routine testing, they discover that his brain has started to fire in different directions at the same time, causing him to begin to think of himself simultaneously as two separate people, Bob the substance D addict and Fred the narcotics agent. But which is his true self? One, none, or both? A Scanner Darkly is easily one of my favourite PKD novels. It's dark, paranoid, unfiltered and pretty tragic when you think about it. The themes of identity and dual personality are fascinating, and while Dick always stated there was never really a moral to the story, there is certainly a moral to be taken from it by the reader, at least that's what I think. The last PKD read is Martian Time Slip. On the arid colony of Mars, the only thing more precious than water may be a 10-year-old schizophrenic boy named Manfred Steiner. For although the UN has slated anonymous children for deportation and destruction, other people, especially Supreme Good member Arnie Cott of the Water Workers Union, suspect that Manfred's disorder may be a window into the future. The story follows Jack Bolan, a repairman who emigrated to Mars to flee from his bouts of schizophrenia. He becomes involved with Arnie Cott's scheme to use Manfred's disorder to his own ends. In Martian Time Slip, PKD uses power, politics, extraterrestrial real estate scams, adultery and murder to penetrate the mysteries of being and time. I think a few people might be a bit like, I wasn't expecting Time Slip for this list, maybe Valis or something, but Martian Time Slip for me is a PKD must read for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's set on Mars, but the story is so different from any other book I've read that's set on Mars. It's fascinating how PKD took a despondent approach to how colonies established themselves there, and how society would shape around factors like the lack of water, and how repair technicians would become one of the most important jobs there. You may have to remind yourself this is not hard sci-fi. There were elements that Dick plainly got wrong based on what information was available on Mars at the time when it was published in 1964, but I was easily able to get over these by turning that good old classic sci-fi filter I have on in my brain. The characters in this book are flawed and PKD deals with the mental disorder schizophrenia in a typical Dick style, questioning preconceptions around the condition. So that's the end of my list. As I said earlier, I'd love to get your own PKD recommendations in the comments. Thanks for watching guys and happy reading.